In this video, I'll demonstrate the many things you can do with text in PhotoPaint. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. In my first example, I want to add some text to this photo. I'll click the Text tool or press the T shortcut. In the Interactive Property bar, I'll set the font by clicking the drop down arrow. I can scroll down to see all of the fonts installed on my computer, and if there is a specific font I want to use, such as Seagull, I can start to type the font name. I can also set the font size, alignment, and character and line spacing. To set the font color, I'll left click a swatch in the color palette. I'll click where I want to place the text, type what I want to appear, including line breaks, and click outside when finished. My objects inspector is open, and the text is listed above the background. Because the text tool is still active, I can click back inside to make changes. I can edit the text itself, or highlight specific characters to change font or size. I can change the color by clicking a different swatch, or I can open the color inspector and use the eyedropper to match a color in the photo. I'll click outside again to finish. With the pick tool, I can move text or drag nodes to resize in one or both directions. I can even use the drop shadow tool to make the text really stand out. While pick is active, I can always double click a text object to return to the text tool and edit the text. New to PhotoPaint 2020 is support for variable fonts and interactive open type fonts. Variable fonts enable you to fine tune some properties of the text in real time. To find variable fonts, I'll open the font list and click the filter icon. Under font technology, I'll check variable fonts. I'll choose one of the fonts in the filtered list, set the size and pick a color, and add the text. Then I'll highlight the text and click the variable fonts icon. The menu of sliders that appears can be used to adjust all sorts of properties of these characters. Some open type characters can also be changed when interactive open type is enabled. With the text still highlighted, I'll open the font list and filter it to show open type fonts. With this new font, I have a small arrow I can click for some alternate sets of characters. Text can also fit to a path. I'll activate the path tool and click and drag along this curve, double clicking when finished. When I activate text and move the cursor around, it changes from an A to a curve symbol while on the path. I'll click and start typing, and the text follows the curve. I can adjust the distance from the path and the offset, as well as text orientation, vertical placement, and horizontal placement. The path itself is used just for placing the text and won't appear in the final image when exported or saved. I can also make existing straight text fit a path. With this text selected with the Pick tool, I'll choose Object, Text, Fit Text to Path, then click the path. To separate the text from the path, I can choose Object, Text, Render as Object. Now I can move the text independently. In addition to using different colors for different characters, I can also apply fills. I have this text selected with the Pick tool, and I'll activate the Fill tool. I can use a solid fill, a fountain fill, bitmap fill, or texture fill. I just have to be sure to click each time inside the character itself. Once characters have been filled, if the text is edited, the fills will be lost. Finally, I can use text as a mask. I've already created this text, and the background photo has been converted to an object. With the Pick tool active, I'll double-click the text to edit it. I'll click Create Mask and click Outside to finish. By default, the area inside the mask, or inside the letters, is what will not be kept. So if I want to remove all areas of the photo outside the letters, I need to choose Mask, Invert Mask. Now when I press Command-X to cut, I have just the filled letters which I can copy and paste onto a different background, and move and rotate and resize. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on text in PhotoPaint. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, 
you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.